This is a good exercise for staying in training. If you can manage this exercise, you have done the most important thing in timeline programming. So this time we want to see one loop as a background, followed by four small picture in pictures in each corner that are supposed to fly in a square around the screen endlessly. We'll start this exercise by choosing a loop as a background, then we'll put it on layer 1, fade up the opacity, activate play loop, and then we'll save it somewhere on the timeline. We'll also set the clip to free run mode. We'll also make the clip a little bit longer. And now we'll take care of getting our clips to fly around the screen in a certain order. So first of all, we choose a clip that's going to be on layer two. Then we'll get the opacity up, activate play loop, and then we'll scale it so that it has the right size and then we'll position it in the upper left corner. Once we've done that, we'll save all of it onto the timeline. We now have created position one, and now we want to let the picture fly to position two, and it should take four seconds. This means plus plus 400. And now we'll move our clip in the X position to the upper right corner to get to position two. Since it is important for us to save both the X and the Y coordinates, we will set the Y position to active so that we can save it onto the timeline as well. This means we have just finalized position 2. Now once more, we'll move on 4 seconds in order to reposition our clip on the Y axis to reach position 3 in the lower right corner. And again, we will make the X value active so that we can save it. Start active and we save it to the timeline. Another four seconds and we can save position four. What is important for us now is that we will end up at the same X position where we began with position one. We can open the layer and look at the positions to check that everything's as it should be. You will now see all the keys, etc. The height or Y position is not supposed to change, which is why we will copy the key and paste it and we'll then place it at the back. We then want to go back to our starting position, which is why we need another four seconds. And then we'll copy both keys from the front and paste them so that we jump directly to the starting position. Now let's take a look at what we've just done. So you see that was the first key, first position, second position, and we'll look at the third position there, and it ends up there. We can now close the layer. So as a next step, we will add another jump cue by right clicking on the time axis and selecting add cue. We will move the jump cue to the position of the last key and since we've changed the mode to jump, we have to add a jump target. Once we've entered the appropriate jump target, we should take a look at the clip to check whether it moves through all positions and then jumps back. It's looking good. It seems we have everything we need to continue with one looped clip that is going through all the positions. Now we'll just take the whole clip, copy it, select the next layer, and by a paste to select a device, we'll add the complete clip to the next layer. But now we should change the content in order to avoid confusion. Of course, we will now have to change the positions. Let us take a closer look at the layer so that we can see those positions. It starts from position 1, goes to 2, 3, 4, and then loops. All we want at this point is to move all these positions by one position. So we go to position 1 and delete it by using the timeline, select and grab all the other positions, and then we'll move them by one position. 
so that this clip will start from the former position 2 and will then move through the other positions to position 1. But now we'll just have to add the starting coordinates, which we'll do by selecting the first keys and copy and paste them to the last step so that our second clip will also go round in the way we want it to. We continue by once more selecting the last clip, adding it to the next layer by using paste to select a device, and then we'll change the content to be able to tell the clips apart from one another. And now we open up the layer obviously again, and as you will have guessed, we just want to move everything by one position once more. After having deleted the starting point, we'll take the other four points, move them by one, move the now pointer to the back, and then we'll copy the starting position as the last final position. After that we'll close the layer, and then for one last time we will copy the complete clip, and we'll then add it to the next layer. Once we've done that, we will then change the content We're making sure that we've got the right content there to avoid confusion. And we'll again open up the layer. And yes, once more, we will ultimately move everything by one position, deleting the starting point, moving the other points. You know the drill by now. We'll add the appropriate start and finish keys and can see that the four clips are exactly where they should be. This is a really good exercise for staying in training. If you can manage this exercise, you have done the most important things in basic timeline programming.